The invention of the Korean typewriter had a significant impact on the Korean writing system. This documentary will focus on the invention of the Korean typewriter, explore the challenges that it faced due to the nature of the Korean writing system, and examine how the invention of the Korean typewriter had actually impacted and caused a change to the Korean writing system. In order to understand how the Korean typewriter works and how it contributed to the transformation of Korean writing, we need to first understand the basics of the Korean Hangul writing system. So let's begin with a brief history of the Korean writing system. Prior to the invention of the Korean alphabet, Hangul, Koreans used Chinese characters to represent the Korean language in written form. It is important to note that Koreans do not speak Chinese. Koreans speak Korean, which is grammatically very different from Chinese, among other things. However, Korean sentences were transcribed and represented using Chinese hanja characters, which is a method known as borrowed notation. King Sejong knew that, that in reality, the two languages are too different to be mutually communicable using the same script. Chinese characters, known as hanja in Korean, is very complex. It is a logographic system that is not phonetic and very difficult to learn. Because it is so difficult to learn and would require years of study to acquire, only the most educated Koreans from the elite and ruling Yangban class could read and write it. Women were also not allowed to learn hanja. Most ordinary Koreans had no mechanism to express their ideas and thoughts in writing. Roughly only 5% of the population had knowledge of hanja. In 1443, King Sejong began creating a writing system that would be easy enough for all Koreans to learn and use to record their thoughts and ideas in writing. King Sejong described this new script in a book called the Hungin Jeongum. The Korean alphabet, known as Hangul, is a phonetic system that has a regular structure and predictable pattern, and consists of 24 letters, 14 consonant letters, and 6 vowel letters. The Korean alphabet script is, however, written very differently from Latin-based alphabet writing. Instead of being written sequentially, the letters are grouped into blocks, which transcribe a syllable. For example, let's look at how Toronto is written in Korean. Toronto has three syllables. Written in English, the seven letters representing all three syllables are grouped together in one word. In Korean, it would be written like this. The T sound would be represented by the Korean letter T, while the O sound would be represented by the Korean letter O. However, instead of having them written sequentially one after another, the letters representing the sounds of the syllable would be combined together into one character. Similarly, the RON in Toronto would be represented by the Korean letter RYO, O, and NYUN to form one character to represent the sound syllable RON. The same would apply for the final syllable sound, TO. Therefore, in Korean, not only do the letters themselves represent the sounds of the language, how the letters are arranged into blocks also tells us how many syllables each word should have. Furthermore, each syllable needs to fit into a similar sized square box. As you can see, the letters combine together to form the syllables for Toronto, each fit nicely into equally sized square boxes. This is the first major difference between how English and other languages with a writing system based on the Latin alphabet compared to Korean poses a major challenge to the creation of a Korean typewriter. 
a Korean typewriter cannot be merely designed by replacing the Latin typefaces with Korean typefaces on a regular American typewriter. However, one inventor in 1945 by the name of Kim Jun Sung tried to do that by proposing a typewriter to type the Korean alphabet, like how the Latin alphabet is typed sequentially and horizontally. For example, instead of having Toronto written in the traditional syllable block, each individual Korean Hangul letter would be typed like this. While this is possible, however, in order for this typewriter to be successful, it would mean that Koreans would have to abandon their tradition of reading and writing their language in syllable blocks. This method would destroy one of the unique syllable block features of the language. This idea did not catch on with Koreans, and the design of this typewriter failed. Koreans were not ready for this change. Two main reasons for this are that typing the letters separately are a waste of space, and also aesthetically not pleasing. As mentioned before, the major technical challenge is fitting all the letters that make each syllable of the word nicely into a box. Based on how the letters are combined together, each letter can take on a different shape. In English, you do not need to worry about this. An A will look the same whether it is at the beginning of the word, middle of the word, or at the end of the word. The only thing you have to worry about is capital letters. In Korean, however, each letter can take on many different shapes depending on the position that it occupies in a box and how many other letters are in the box. For example, let's look at this Korean sentence. 강사는 지난달에 닭고기를 다 먹었어요. It is just a silly sentence that I'm using to illustrate the different letter shapes. It translates into, the teacher ate all the chicken last month. Let's examine some of these words and letters. Ta means all. This word syllable has only two letters in it. The tigit and the a take on a certain shape. Ta means month or moon. The, the word syllable has three letters in it. The tigit, a, and the ril take on a certain shape. Notice how the tigit and the a are different between the two words based on the position within the box. Ta means chicken. This word syllable has four letters in it. Notice how the ril has changed shape because of the extra q. Let's look at how the Hangul letter kyuk changes shape depending on the position and number of other characters it shares the box in the syllable word with. There are five kyuks in the sentence, and they all take on a different shape and size. So how will a typewriter be able to handle all the different shapes and positions of each letter within a box? In order for such a device to be developed, major technicalities need to be overcome. A second major difference is the direction in which Korean used to be written. Due to the strong influence of Chinese on the Korean prior to the invention of Hangul, even after the adoption of Hangul for writing in Korea, it was written vertically from right to left, top to bottom, which is the opposite of how Latin-based writing systems are which is written horizontally from left to right. This custom of writing vertically from right to left continued right into the 1950s. In 1914, Iwonik, a Korean immigrant in Hawaii, USA, attempted to create a typewriter that was able to type vertically. He replaced the English typefaces with Korean typefaces, but placed them sideways. After finishing typing, one just need to turn the page 90 degrees to read it. The major disadvantage to his design was that while typing, 
you would need to be able to read sideways until you are finished and can remove the paper from the typewriter. This proved to be a major inconvenience. Needless to say, no other attempts have been made to create a Korean typewriter that can type vertically. This obstacle was too large to overcome. Korean society would have to choose between not adopting the use of a typewriter or abandon the tradition of writing vertically from right to left in favor of writing horizontally from left to right. The third major obstacle to creating a Korean typewriter is the custom of using mixed script in Korean writing. Even though Hangul is the official script of Korea and widely used, the use of mixed script that includes both the Hangul alphabet and Hanja, or Chinese characters, was still prevalently used. Traditionally in Korea, highly literate and highly educated people were able to read and write Hanja. So there is also a prestige linked to using Hanja that many traditional and conservative Koreans maintained. Another reason, however, is because of the large number of homophones in Korean. When writing, Hanja is often used to differentiate the meaning of the homophones. For example, cha means both t and car in Korean. Therefore, oftentimes, the hanja character is written or used to avoid confusion. This hanja character, cha, means car, while this hanja character, cha, means t. So for a sentence like this, where this cha means car, and the other cha means t, it could be written like this, where the hanja character for car and t would be used respectively to avoid confusion. That being said, context would help a person determine the ambiguous meaning of cha, as it would not make sense to be drinking a car in the t. The only meaning that would make sense would be drinking tea in the car. Nevertheless, this tradition of mixed script was widely followed, especially in publishing and newspapers. Since there are literally thousands of Hanja characters, it would be impossible to include them in a Korean typewriter. Korean society would need to choose between not adopting the use of a typewriter or abandon the use of Hanja characters in a Korean typewriter. In 1947, Kong byung created the first mechanical Hangul typewriter. Two aspects about how Korean was traditionally written were abandoned in the design of this typewriter because of the technical difficulties that could not be overcome. First, Kyung byung typewriter typed horizontally from left to right, which was opposite of how Koreans traditionally wrote, which was vertically from right to left. Second, the typewriter did not incorporate any Hanja characters. This typewriter can only type pure Hangul alphabets. Thus, anyone using this typewriter will not be able to write in mixed Hangul and Hanja Chinese character text, which was the tradition. Kong byung typewriter, however, was somewhat able to maintain the syllable box design of Hangul. It had a three-character set system. The first set was for consonants that appeared at the beginning of a word. The second set was for vowels that appeared in the middle of a syllable block. The third set was for consonants that appeared at the end of a word syllable block. Although the text was perfectly readable, however, the text typed was not perfectly square shaped or equally shaped which is how Hangul should be written traditionally. Some syllable blocks were taller and or wider than others, depending on how the letters were combined. However, the military and the Ministry of Education quickly adopted this typewriter. With the military and the Ministry of Education adopting the use of this typewriter, 
that wrote horizontally from left to right and using only pure Hangul characters with no Hanja Chinese characters. This marked the beginning of the transition of the writing style in Korean society. Eventually, the vast majority of textbooks, printed materials, signs, newspapers, and even personally handwritten writing is written horizontally from left to right with no use of Hanja Chinese characters at all. Even with the current computer technology and word processing software, which would allow Koreans to revert back to writing vertically from right to left and using mixed Hangul and Hanja Chinese character script, Koreans have not reverted and continue to write horizontally from left to right without the use of Hanja Chinese characters. Thus, the invention of the Korean Hangul typewriter had definitely had a lasting impact on how Koreans read and write.